So I've had conversations with a number of my friends who actually keep chicken. And most of them, when their chicks are actually less than a month, they actually get affected or infected by some diseases. Now there's one thing that they, they keep calling me and you know asking me what kind of a disease is this. And sometimes they give symptoms of Gumboro, sometimes they give symptoms of Newcastle. So in this episode specifically, I wanna talk about the signs and symptoms of Newcastle chicken disease. So we'll be starting a series of all these diseases and how to know the signs and symptoms so that when you're looking at your chicks at home or your chickens, you're able to know what type of disease this specific chick or chicken has so that you can actually, you know, just take measures to ensure that you deal with them accordingly or you administer the right, um, you know, either vaccine or, or, or medicine or, you know, a drug just to prevent that. Newcastle disease is a very dangerous disease and can actually wipe out all your flock, like seriously speaking, it can wipe out 100% of your flock in less than four days. Yeah, that is how dangerous this disease is. And the other reason why it's dangerous is also because that, um, it is easily transmitted. It can either be transmitted through air. Remember that if there is a farm that is like, like five kilometers away from you, within a five kilometer radius, and there are chickens in that farm that have been attacked by um, Newcastle disease, that disease can actually be spread from that farm, which is five kilometers away to you via, you know, air. <laughs> so you can imagine five kilometers. So you have to ensure that whatever it is that you are, you're cautious and at least you know uh, what type of disease your chicken has actually been infected with. Also, um, if let's say your chicken come into contact with, let's say, uh, you know, fecal matter uh, of, uh, from a chicken that has been infected, chances are high that it will actually be infected. So in this particular episode, we'll be talking about some signs and symptoms of the Newcastle chicken disease. But before that, for those people who are new to this channel, my name is Samuel. Of course, this is Africa Farming, a channel focused on new generation farmers and new entrants in farming who are willing to learn new farming practices. So take a second or two to subscribe, hit on the notification bell so that YouTube can always you know, notify you whenever we have a new video released. And for those people who want to, you know, watch the behind the scenes that we normally shoot, you can actually link with us on our social media handles. Of course, you know our logo, you've seen our logo even in this video, you'll see this logo because there are different channels that have the same name. So just go and search Africa Farming, KE on TikTok, X and Instagram, or Africa Farming on Facebook. And of course on YouTube, we're also Africa Farming, but make sure you look at the logo. Our logo is just right up, either it's on this side or on this side, so just check um, check, um, we always brand our channels with this logo. Make sure you follow us, click on the subscribe button if you're here on YouTube, if you're on all the other platforms, follow us, like our pages and all that. Remember we're on the journey to get to 10,000 subscribers, right now we are around 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Kindly, you'll actually be helpful and supporting us if you click on that subscribe button and help us get to that milestone of 10,000 YouTube subscribers. So let's get back to this video. So there are actually three strains of Newcastle chicken disease. There is one that is a weak strain, there is one that is mild, and then there is one that can actually, as I've said initially, wipe your chickens in less than four days. So let's start looking at each of them. Now the other, the first one, which is the weakest strain, you will actually not even notice physically that your chicken has actually been infected. And remember, most of these chickens are actually in, in, uh, infected. Even if they are vaccinated, by the way, don't assume that if a chicken is vaccinated, uh, the chickens will not be infected by Newcastle virus. Remember, Newcastle is a virus, and you can't really treat a virus. You can only find ways in which you can you know, reduce uh, the effects of the signs and symptoms to the chickens. Remember when we, have, we had COVID, most of us were actually infected with COVID. It's only that uh, the, the, the vitamin C's and the zinc that we actually took were meant to, you know, kind of build our immunity to an extent that it will deal with the signs and symptoms of those things that would attack us, uh, you know, alongside COVID. So there are those three strains as I've talked about. Let's start with the weakest. Now the weakest strain, you'll find that your chickens will not show physical signs of being sick but you'll find that they have mild respiratory issues. Some may cough. Uh, you might actually see some greenish poop. 
uh, especially for your chicks and even adult chickens you might see greenish poop uh, in the African water so when you see such so, such kind of signs then know that your chickens have actually been uh, infected with uh, a Newcastle chicken disease but this is the mild strain or rather the weakest strain because you'll not really see physically uh, the chickens might not really uh, show the physical signs that they are, they are sick. Then there is actually one that is more serious than the weakest, weakest strain. Now in this particular case, you'll find the respiratory issues that we talked about in the earlier case is actually serious. So you'll find that even your chickens, uh, when they're breathing, you'll actually just see that they have respiratory issues. Another thing, of course, you'll notice if you have layers um, in, your, in your flock, you'll actually find that the egg production has actually gone low to an extent that even it will get to a time where they will not lay eggs at all. When this particular strain attacks your chicken, you will actually notice the physical signs that your chicken is ill. And what are the physical signs? You'll actually notice that your chicken is not active. Um, now the difference between this and the more serious one, we'll talk about when you get the more serious one, but this one at least you will see some signs that your chicken is not well. Now the third strain, which is the most serious of all, um, there's no need for me to mention the actual names of the strain because it's not as important. What is important is for you to know the signs and symptoms because the names are somehow complicated. Now when we're talking about the most serious strain, so the first sign that you'll see in this particular strain is that the egg, pro egg production, if you're talking about layers, will be at completely zero. Now on the first day you might lose 20% of your stock, in the second day you might lose 50% of your stock, and in the third day you might lose 80%, 80 to 100%. So this is actually a very serious um, uh, strain. And the other sign and symptom is you'll find that your chicks, apart from the respiratory issues which will be crazy in this particular strain, there is also the nervous attack. So you'll find that either your chickens and chicks are walking backwards or in a circular motion. And sometimes you might find even the neck has been twisted for chicks. I'm sure you've seen chicks or chickens that have their necks twisted and facing upwards, you know, like twisted and facing upwards. That is a sign of this strain, and this one is actually very, very, very serious. Now, apart from just the nervous issues, and I think this is also part of the nervous issue, apart from just the twisted neck, you might also find, uh, in some cases, leg paralysis. Now, there are people who might actually confuse these with um, Marex, Marex disease, but if you find these, there are respiratory issues, and some of these signs that I've talked about, and in addition to that, there's leg paralysis, just know that that is the third strain, which is very, very serious. So, so what are some of the remedies that we might take when we notice some of these signs and symptoms? Remember, Newcastle can attack your chicks and your chickens. It does not just attack chicks alone. Most people confuse Newcastle with other types of, uh, like with Gumboro, which only attacks chicks. So just know that Newcastle attacks even adult chicks, I mean adult chickens. So make sure that you take caution of that. What are the remedies that you need? Remember when your chicks, we talked about the vaccination schedule. Uh, if you've not watched it, kindly go back to our videos. There is a specific, specific video we talked about the vaccination schedule. If you follow the vaccination schedule for your chicks, number one thing is you might you actually will have to vaccinate against newcastle disease but that doesn't mean that the newcastle will still not come so every after three months this is just my own practice i don't know other people but for us every after three months we always vaccinate our chickens against newcastle by administering the vaccine in their drinking water it is as easy as that so ensure that every after three months you do vaccinate uh, you administer this vaccination to your chicks and your chickens, the whole flock. Yeah? And then after that, of course, give multivitamins here and there just to boost their immunity and to make them uh, not susceptible to some of these diseases, not only Newcastle, but others. So after administering the vaccine, also give multivitamins. The second thing, the reason why most chickens are attacked by Newcastle is because their immunity is actually low. 
So the best thing to actually do when it comes to such things is to help them, to, to help boost their immunity. And how do you boost their immunity? Remember when chicks are stressed or chickens are stressed, their immunity goes low. So one thing is also just check how your chickens are actually reared, where you are. Do they have uh, the amount of space, especially, we are talking about Kenyaji chicken, right? So just ensure that uh, they have space because they really need that space. Let them walk around, you know, let them live their life without stress. And if you find that there is something that is actually disturbing them, let's say there is an external uh, thing like an animal or something, just make sure that you construct a very nice structure for your chickens to help reduce the stress that they may actually face. And in such a case, you are actually building their immunity, let the immunity be stronger. And that is the first way or the second way in which you can, um, you can reduce uh, chances of Newcastle disease attacking your, your chickens and not just Newcastle, even other diseases. The other remedy is once you see the signs and symptoms that we talked about, you need to start separating the affected chickens from the ones that you think are not affected. This might actually help save some, some of the chickens. So ensure that whenever it is that you see these signs early enough, separate, quarantine, create a quarantine zone where you can, and the quarantine zone should not be close to the other chickens <laughs> you have to create a quarantine area at, in a very, uh, in an area that is not really, uh, in, in, for lack of a better word, uh, connected or linked to where the healthy ones are. Now the third remedy is to administer what we call oxytetracycline powder in their drinking water. Now what this does, remember I told you Newcastle disease has conspirators in the likes of chronic respiratory disease, CRD. So uh, just to prevent those secondary infections, administer oxytetracycline powder in there, in their water. The fourth remedy is um, always make sure that you dis disinfect your chicken house before you bring in a new flock. When you have an existing flock and now you've, you're done, you, you know, you, you, you're already done with that particular flock, ensure that you disinfect that house before you bring in a um, uh, uh, new flock. Remember there's a, there is a video that we've shot where we were constructing our farm chicken house where we showed you how to disinfect the chicken house. So just ensure you disinfect your house just to ensure that if there are particles or, or droppings from the previous flock that might have been infected by Newcastle, those specific virus are actually, you know, done away with through the disinfection. The fifth remedy is um, there are those people who stay along coastal areas and even if you're not in a coastal area but you have access to coconut, give coconut water to your chickens. Coconut water has a lot of strong electrolytes and they'll help your chickens stay hydrated and that actually builds immunity. Remember we talked about immunity? It actually helps build immunity of the chickens and it boosts their energy levels and all that. The other remedy is you have to ensure that you give quality feed to your chickens to just boost the immunity. It's all about the immunity, by the way, because it's a viral disease. Viral disease cannot be treated, but if their immunity is good, then your chickens might survive. But if their, their immunity is very low, though, that is when we see most of these chickens, uh, you know, dying. So ensure that you give a food that is nutritious and quality. There was a time uh, in our chicken house where the brand of feed that we used to provide w was actually not being produced. So we ended up changing the brand to a different brand, but we didn't know that the, 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 the brand that we were now adopting did not have all the nutrients that were needed by chickens. So we started seeing most of our chickens, you know, dying here and there. And the reason was simple. They were not getting the uh, nutrition that they needed, right? to be able to build their immunity. So don't make that mistake. Ensure that whatever feed that you give, whether it's commercial or you're, you're doing it yourself, ensure that the feed is quality and very nutritious to be able to build immunity for your chickens. So I hope I've answered some of the questions you had about the Newcastle chicken disease. I will also be bringing other videos uh, in the near future about other diseases that might attack your chickens and the signs and symptoms that you should be looking out for so that whenever you see those things at least you know what to do. But remember the most important thing is you need to vaccinate your chickens. Follow the vaccination schedule uh, to the latter. 
because um, just by vaccinating your chickens, you've actually reduced the chances of attack by more than 80%. If you find value in this video, ensure that you like this video, share it with your friends. Uh, if you have any feedback, if maybe you think I've left one or two things out, go to the comment section, let me know what you think about that. Have you ever been attacked by Newcastle disease? What are those signs and symptoms that you saw that we've not talked about? Just share with these people uh, because this channel is specifically for new people or new entrants in farming who are willing to learn. So share some of the experiences you've actually had with regards to Newcastle disease and let's all learn together. For those people who want to link with us on our social media handles um, at Africa Farming K on X, Instagram and TikTok. Of course, Africa Farming on Facebook and here on YouTube. Remember to check our logo. Our logo is either here or here one of them and you'll see our logo so whenever you click subscribe on our page or follow us on those social media platforms make sure you confirm with our logo so that you actually follow the right platform because i've noticed that there are many other channels that have the same name thanks for joining us today and watching this video and if you've not watched uh, our other videos kindly go back to our channel scroll through you'll see uh, videos that we've shot before pick that which is relevant to you and let me know what you think about it. Let me know through the comment section or in our social media handles. And that's it for us today. Stay peaceful, stay woke, and always remember to changamka na ukulima. Bye bye.